run side and we didn't wear hard hats and and the way the fact that it was like you know it wasn't very overlooked kind of like enabled like a, a, a method of work that probably like wasn't the safest um, <laughs> <laughs> but i think that's probably something that we'll have yeah we'll all have to adjust someone but, emailed this didn't they it was oh, yeah, yeah, we, yeah we had this like this like lovely old man um who like <laughs> Um, and probably like fair enough. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's like. About like, what did he say? Oh, he said, I can't believe you. This is a construction site. You don't have any hard hats. It's a complete disaster. But, oh. you know, but in a way, it's like it's, it's also the, the like one of the that resourceful one. Like that's really like you know making the best of it, calling it resourceful. But it's like I don't know. It's like you know. So for example, like um, with no power on the site, we had to kind of like make our own solutions. So we. Um, we strung uh, a, a, like a whatever 50 meter length of armored cable across the canal um, uh, from the business opposite that we had spent a few weeks, you know, charming and <laughs> to, like borrow their power. And so then we we used like expanding scaffolding poles like in the ribs of the structure because we had a, a deal with the TFL that as long as we didn't do any permanent fixing to their structure, like we have like the easy route. Um, which is still a hell of a lot of work. Um, and so anyway, then we had like um, about 25 people on our end, like just pulling the armored cable um, to like try and draw it, draw, um, draw, draw it taut so it wouldn't hit any passing um, canal barges. Um, and the police came and um, you know, thought we were kind of trying to like abseil into the business. <laughs> um, but in a way, like so obviously that's not an ideal solution to drawing power. But you know. We had to find a solution, and so and so we did with whatever means we could, and so we probably didn't follow all the the, the right rules regulations, but probably kind of a more rewarding process for it, I think, rather than just actually being like stopped but outright. It, but it wouldn't have happened in Hartlepool Road. I mean, we wouldn't be able to do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that's true. I mean, we did, we did, yeah, yeah. there were other. Oh, other yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, no interest at all, um, apart from we had a car crash, um, <laughs> but that was you know, like a, probably a product of working too late on site rather than actually you know, maybe use on site. But you know, to be honest, like, there was, you know, cause it, it, it really that was something that we had to address early on when we knew that we were inviting volunteers onto the site, because it, it can be quite unpredictable as to people's you know, level of experience and like, how much their confidence to take on if you give them a role as well, actually. Like going beyond what your your capability, that's really like probably pretty dangerous. And so that was kind of like those risks were were you know we tried to kind of avoid those through the design. And so that um, you know anyone who comes to the site could you know could spend a couple of days just, just threading wood you know, on a rope, which is which is kind of pretty um, pretty uh, safe. <laughs> well, I just say it's really great that people are going out and actually building stuff. I was sort of wanting to raise the question generally of whether, whether or not drawing should be the emphasis that standing in a, in a show that's all about drawing and whether we should be making more. I think it depends on, on the way you work though. Like in, in, a, in, a, in a group, like yeah, in a group of 20, like drawing steadily works so well because you can't like all cram around the model or whatever. But I can imagine like in terms of expediency and scale there are other ways in which they're Incredibly useful, and the like elements of this project, which is like really evident where they're needed. Um, now, I wonder if I could ask another question. If that's all right, but <laughs> this is a question we discussed actually on Tuesday um, in another discussion. But how exportable do you think this model of like a pop up is? You know, how far can you take it outside of London? when you don't have somebody like the Barbican to support you with the cultural events, which support the physical creation of this. And maybe that's unfair to ask to you, but I mean, in general, do you think it is a model that could exist? But there already is, Pop-Up City Blog. But I mean, I, I don't know, I guess it's like, so, you know, in terms of like support, yeah, like, yeah, we were very lucky um, in the second project to, to like, have the support of like, more established cultural institutions. Um, but you know, Cinerodium started with like, with you know, like none of that and none of budget. 
two and a half thousand pounds. And so it's like, I guess, I don't know, I mean, part of me it's like, I, I guess I, I, you know, I, it's also worth questioning the, the, the reason behind doing something temporary. And, you know, there's, uh, it being termed pop up, you know, it becomes a commodity, which I think, um, a, a, like, a lot of what went into these projects was actually about a, like a process and a methodology. And just that being, by virtue of being temporary, it allowed a certain type of freedom. Um, so, I mean, I'm sure in other situations, like there are other ways of doing it because in a way like being able to run these as kind of like mini businesses or something you know where you like buy a ticket and buy a drink we're able to like feed back in and subsidize them and, but that that in a way tailored them towards to you meant you know you're constrained because you have to make a certain type of environment um whereas i think you know now looking at kind of like what we'd like to do after having done these two projects you know it's kind of like i suppose it's more interesting so you resist the term pop-up, would you? Um, I like. I think, like, obviously, <clears throat> I don't know. I guess probably like it's. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, people can call it what they want, you know. You can read into it however you want, and um, I suppose the like the um, the thing at the essence of pop-up, which is nice, is that it's like and something that we try really hard to do with scenario was just that like. In deciding kind of what on earth this petrol station should be, was that it's um, that it should be something which is has a has a broader public audience than that of, of architects and you know where we're building kind of a viewing platform like which is a, a, you know onto like the roof of the canopy that might have excited some readers of AJ or something, but it doesn't have the ability to draw to bring people in to to you know this this kind of new space from a kind of broader walks of life and so that's something that kind of like is nice about that whole pop-up um, phenomenon is that kind of like it's a way of engaging with a, with a, a different type and of also topic. you know if you look at the pop-up city blog whatever it's basically you know it's people looking at things which are happening without people realizing it's pop-up it's just people doing stuff and then other people criticizing it or reviewing it or calling it whatever they want to call it so maybe you know it's like I mean, I, I can see it. There's a lot of ways of reading it. I mean, like, maybe on one hand, it's like there's always been like a culture of like you know, short-term out or outdoor events in the in the summer. You know, like Wimbledon or Glyndebourne or whatever. Crystal Palace. And it's like you know, you know it's just it's maybe it's just that these these types of events are moving more into the city rather than being out you know in field and um, you know wherever Glastonbury is. Glastonbury is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like that's the value of the architects, though, 
there should be some uh, like payment there somehow. I don't know. I, I think it's great that it happens like projects like this. But um, but, but I mean, like I'm sorry, but like if you, if you if like if, if I was a writer and I wrote a bio, an autobiography, I wouldn't be criticised for working for free. You know, it's more. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not criticising. You, but it, I'm but trying it, to say, all I'm trying to say is that there's, there's, there's a, that's, there's some sort of commodity there that you're, you're giving people, and I, I think it's great that it's like it's free, but I, I don't see it sort of, de it does devalue like the profession in a way. I see. But then, you're, but then you're very much, you know, compartmentalizing it. You're saying this is built by architects, whereas if you, you know, there's like your garden shed is not, you know, it's built by you in free time. It's just this is public, you know. Like, why can't you do this outside of the office? It's like, yeah, just just like writing or I don't know, cycling. Or but isn't it also <laughs> that, like you don't you don't need a fire for this to happen? The, the the idea of a redundant or a disused petrol station comes from people who want to do things and they want to see these spaces and they see the potential and they make it happen. They're not waiting to be sort of commissioned and paid. And Laborious. So you're right in terms of it does cause problems because people don't expect you to come and do this for free. I mean, we have had requests for like kind of vague budgetless things, but then I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm not trying to say it's right or wrong. I'm just but I think I don't know. Somehow it's like a it's a question that's often posed to us, which was never like it was somehow just like seems so at odds with the the reason why how the projects came about. Mm. Um, with ways, it's always like it's always just like slightly frustrating, um, but I suppose now where we're in a situation where we where we have been like approached and on like you know to, to design a, a space and, and offer a service where like obviously like it it's a different dynamic and and yes obviously like design has an immense value and should be should be charged for, but um, but I yeah I, I somehow I. I yeah, like I, I'd always seen kind of something like the Cinerodium um, as like the ultimate home cinema, like rather than like a service that I'm providing to a passing public <laughs> for which my compensation is like good ex pub publicity, you know? Could you feel yourself changing between the first one and the second one? Was there, was there an attitude shift when it became you weren't the client anymore, you were just doing it, and then you were still doing the same thing, but there but was a client involved, and so the next one so, might so, be so in a way, it's like. Like, like um, the Cinerodium uh, didn't happen in isolation. Like, we weren't just, like, didn't totally do everything ourselves, you know. Like, we worked with, with, with amazing people, like the Cinema Museum and, and the, um, you know, Flint, who helped us do all the rigging, and, and you know, a lot of it out of, like, goodwill, but, you know, there's a kind of a very, like, collaborative spirit in that. And for the second project, in a way, it was, you know, it was, it, it kind of felt like more a continuation of that rather than, you know, like we had, we had the idea for the project before we applied for the fund. And in a way, like we were always kind of a few steps ahead of the, 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 the people funding the project. So it kind of like, it, there weren't any concessions that we really had, we felt we had to make about the project other than like through like, you know, like it, it like logos and like, yeah. Stuff like that. Well, yeah, um, it wasn't necessarily talking about any concessions that were made or anything like that, but there's always sort of with when you get a volunteer thing to start with building a bench somewhere and the building, and there's always this sort of progression of it begins to turn into something else. And I was just wondering if that attitude has changed how you work or changed how you might plan on work in the future or whether this turns into an entity in itself that then begins to do sort of. I think, you know, I think there's, there's like a very clear understanding of like of the, the you know the the way, the reasons why the projects have been successful, and a lot of that is about you know having this huge pool of of, of people kind of being involved, and that um, you know like any kind of transition towards kind of like um, you know in a way that so kind of keeping it in a situation where we're volunteers as well has always made that much like much more, you know, much easier to, to deal with and it hasn't felt like we've had to cross any boundaries where like, where, where we're paying ourselves but at some point there's like a, a cut off and everyone below that point is working for free or for experience or as an intern and everyone above that point is like, you know, you know, kind of like really profiting. Yeah. Really <laughs> yeah. Um, but, um, again,
again, I suppose you know there's a there's a there's a limit to to, to these to like understanding projects in that way, um, which is something I'm sure we'll have to to, to address sooner or later. So as far from the devaluing profession, I don't think that projects like this show exactly why you know it is valuable and why it's good design. You know, you don't even need to uh, have a lot of resources behind you. But, you know, I don't know, I'm making myself very clear. But yeah. I, think, yeah, I think it is making architects popular then architects. And potentially showing people that they can do and then architects can then can show them how to make it simple and easy. Yeah, and I mean, you could, you could pay someone to make a cinema under a fire, but they probably wouldn't do it as well as a bunch of architects did it, and um, you'd have to pay them. <laughs> and it's nice free. It's nice to say it can be done as well, especially if it's just But it's also okay. where, it also, it's also where you, you know, like where you, like, like where's the role of the architect, you know, you're calling an architect, you know, like, like, you know, we weren't offered the possibility of the, you know, given the site, or, you know, in, in for like the we weren't kind of like, it wasn't the developer calling us up and being like, oh, I've got the site, I want to keep it warm. Before I, you know, <laughs> before I set off and, and made loads of money, it's like I think like a lot a lot of the 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 involvement really comes in at that, or like the benefit I suppose comes in at that um, early stage. Would you say uh, the money? Uh, well, I don't know whether one of the points of the project was criticism or possibly where the money is. I think is it where it's required or possibly not? I would, um, I don't know, I think it was probably interesting, like, um, listening to that conversation a bit earlier that, like, you instigated about kind of, like, being more a part of the, of the, you know, building industry and stuff. And in a way, it's like, we've, like, kind of done that bit in a weird way, you know, where, like, where we've acted as, um, you know, they've acted some way like businesses, and there's probably ways in which those businesses would be profitable. Like certainly, like the folly kind of like earned more money through operating than it did through the grants it received, um, and so I don't know if I can't remember what you. No, the question was, um, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Uh, we, you said that there was no funding, and you worked for free as well. well that, is that possibly saying that you don't work for free? Well, okay, no, you didn't work. You weren't paid, so you weren't doing it for the money. Yeah. Okay. So and uh, possibly. A lack of project in a lack of funding usually would be no project unless it's the initiative. There's a reason behind it. I don't know. As a usually a profession is more like you work for money. No, no, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So that's not, that's not. <laughs> without the incentive of getting paid for it. So the people who did it did it without the incentive of getting paid for it. What is my my question is whether that was a criticism towards where the funding is going to be. Whether touch like projects like these mean something like that or not. Like sorry, my my other is not a really clear question. Uh, we were going back to what I said. It, it, it wasn't done as a response to like not having the opportunity to do it for mine. It no, that's not what I meant, sorry. Um, it's more like a criticism towards a fact that there's no funding for for any kind of but any any of this kind of project or any uh, any anything which is possibly outside of the commercial uh, uh, realm. So you have the Tesco's or the Asdas who are happy to invest or mix residential blocks or Anything and possibly the bespoke architectural project is less valued. I think, like, um, more than it being conceived as like a bespoke architectural object or whatever, you know, like the ambition was more as a form of like, you know, like empowerment in terms of like being able to affect your your your, like, your physical environment, and that um, that is not just you know for for someone you know working in an office or working in the LDA or whoever to, 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 do, to do those major decisions, but that anyone can do it, you know. But I think that's probably, I suppose that in a, in a way that's a yes, but it's also a no. Yeah. I think, I think it's a 
think um, what you said is really interesting. You, you demonstrated, I mean, this is basically design and build of our architects, and um, you're demonstrating all the skills from designing something, finding a problem, finding a solution, designing something, getting the materials in, discovering problems with materials, and getting to a really good product. And what you said, probably if it was a developer behind it, would have been done as well. It, it demonstrates, I don't know, for me, in essence, what an architect is and should do, and should be able to. I don't know, because it's like, you know, your social enterprise businesses can make money, but you just have to be twice as good a businessman. Like to make it work, and you know, and like de developments and all sorts of things can be designed well, but it's just got to be like the. But they don't have the architect, do they? They don't have. I don't know. They don't have. They don't. They don't have the. I don't know. But like, I'm quite clear. This wasn't about money anymore. It was more about coming back to the. To the it's not like system. one or the other. It's like showing again why. Yeah, why we need architects. By the way, developments would still be better if an architect was involved in this a demonstration of what an architect can offer. I think you go back to your point about yeah, yeah. Gove, it's quite a good thing you showing that you can do a good design which doesn't cost the earth. Not only it should be anything we do for Gove should be free, but you could do a decent school design and we have value to add for that stuff. So you can take that sort of stuff to him and say, look what we can do. It's like, it's not even, like, it costs, it's very cheap to produce, but, like, the, the architectural value, I think, is, like, I, personally, I don't know, it's very hard to judge, but it's, it's high, so you, there should be some way of determining that, maybe, I don't know, kind of see it as the, the, the architect's important in this project for its success, like, the, the materials and the cost in that sense. And that you're being approached now to do to do more projects and probably being able to be paid for it. I don't know. It shows, shows, shows the value of your work. And regardless if you've been paid or not, I don't, I don't care. I think it's a, it's, um, it, it's, it's a um, experiment to, or a way to show what skills you actually do have as architect and that we are not just, I don't know, the ones sitting 